and cite the example for Ladakh. Ladakh has a desert like condition. The rainfall is less than 8 centimeter per annum. Per annum rainfall is less than 8 centimeter. So nobody wants to stay there. There are small, small settlements near the water bodies. Otherwise, that is almost a desert area. So, climate is important. And here you keep in mind, India is lying in Andaman and Nicobar also, that is also India. That is hot and humid. Temperature is high throughout the year. Rainfall is also high. That is, that's why it is covered by dense forest. In the hot and humid climate, people don't want to stay. Because hot and humid climate means many diseases. Barsat mein bimariya zada ho jati hai. Dingu hi tyagi ko bimar kar gaya. A small insect and affected the health of a healthy person. So nobody wants to stay where the conditions are not conducive for the health. And one more point here you can add, apart from Andaman Nicobar, Tarai region. Tarai is a belt in front of the Shivaliks. It is infested with mosquitoes. Mosquitoes survive well if the moisture is there and temperature is also good. So Tarai belt of India is also sparsely populated. The third factor is the availability of water. It also determines the distribution of population because for survival, man need food and water. Out of the two, water is more important. We cannot survive more than 3-4 days if we are not getting the drinking water. And water is required not only for drinking, for domestic use, for irrigation, agricultural use, for industries, and in the rivers there may be boating and transport of goods. Water is a multi-purpose asset. We need it. So wherever there is more water, both surface and underground water, more people prefer to stay in that area. Any area where the underground water table is missing or surface drainage is not perennial. Water is not in the river throughout the years. They are sparsely, sparsely populated. And you compare the northern plains of India with the peninsular India. The rivers of northern plains of India are by and large perennial. They contain water almost throughout the year. There are big rivers, the Ganga, the Yamuna, the Satlaj, and their tributaries, the Brahmaputra. They carry water almost throughout the year. Though the discharge fluctuates, the discharge will be more in the rainy season, less in the winter or summer season, but water is available throughout the year. Secondly, where water is available on surface, the underground water table is also rich. So, in the plain area, the water surface and underground water table both are available in abundance. So, more people are in this part of the country. If you remember the data, 40% of the Indian population is living in the Gangetic Plain. That is a big percentage. Now, the next determinant. is the soils. We have the more fertile soil, more productive soil and less productive soil. The concentration of more people is in the area where the soil is alluvial or more fertile. Because a farmer can obtain two, three crops in a year. And these are the areas. Alluvial soil is found in the areas where perennial rivers are flowing. Consequently, the northern plains of India are more densely populated. And you compare this 
with the Dakkan lava plateau. In the Dakkan lava plateau, the soil is alluvial, but underground water table is missing. A red soil area like Karnataka, Tamil Nadu, Peninsula India, the soil is less productive. They are at this soil is not attracting more number of people. In general, the soils of the peninsular India are not at par to the alluvial soil of northern plains. That's why northern plains are more densely populated as compared to the peninsular plateau of India. So this is also a factor. And next point which you can keep in mind is the accessibility. where people can move easily, human being themselves and where they can transport their goods, they are more densely populated. Indirectly it means the development of roads and railways in the plain areas is much easier. The accessibility is good in the plain areas because the construction of roads and construction of transport, other means of transport is easy in the plain area, that's why plain areas are more densely populated. Compare it with the mountainous areas. In the mountains, the construction of roads is not so easy, it is very expensive. It needs a lot of capital and labor. Consequently, the mountainous areas are sparsely populated. There may be historical reasons also, there may be social reasons also, there may be cultural regions, religious regions also. There may be economic factors. This is not the time to discuss all these factors. If there is a question on the distribution of population, we have to keep the, take the help of these points. And at the same time, keep in mind the areas of negative population or negative areas. Negative areas of population. It is a technical word in cartography. When we prepare the map of population, we demarcate the negative areas. Negative areas means where population is not attracted or not living. In the negative areas, keep in mind three, four points. In the case of India, Thar Desert, west of the Aravallis, it is a negative area of population. Simply because there is shortage of drinking water, the soil is sandy, soil is not very fertile, the rainfall is very little. The variability of rainfall is very high, 65% or 60%. That's why our Thar Desert is a negative area of population. But this is not the only negative area. Ladakh is also there. And the area which is frequently affected by famines or drought condition is also relatively negative area of population. But in the examination you highlight Thar Desert and Ladakh. They are the negative areas of population. One. Number two. High mountains. Like the greater Himalayas. and some parts of the lesser Himalayas. If you see the human settlements in the Himalayas, you will find very little basti and settlements or towns about 3000 meters. 
सो द टॉपिक इज डेमोग्राफिक एट्रीब्यूट ऑफ इंडियन पॉपुलेशन और द कैरेक्टरिस्टिक्स ऑफ द इंडियन पॉपुलेशन वट इज कवर्ड इन द डेमोग्राफिक एट्रीब्यूट द डेमोग्राफिक एट्रीब्यूट मीन्स बर्थ रेट एंड बर्थ रेट इज कैलकुलेटेड पर थाउजेंड ऑफ पॉपुलेशन इन वन ईयर देन डेथ रेट नंबर थ्री नेचुरल ग्रोथ रेट इज देयर सम नेचुरल ग्रोथ रेट ऑल्सो वट डू वी मीन बाई नेचुरल ग्रोथ रेट ऑफ पॉपुलेशन यस बर्थ रेट माइनस डेथ रेट दैट इज नेचुरल इंक्रीज बट देयर मे बी पीपल कमिंग फ्रॉम अदर कंट्रीज एंड मे बी पीपल गोइंग आउट ऑफ द कंट्री दैट इज नॉट नेचुरल If you see the natural growth rate of population of Delhi, it is much lower. But people from all parts of the country are coming, and Delhi's population is growing very fast. That is because of immigration. The next is these three are known as vital statistics. in the population of any country the birth rate the death rate and the growth rate i mean natural growth rate they are very important they affect all aspect of life number 4 is distribution next number 5 density number 6 sex ratio 7 literacy rate number 8 dependency ratio who are the people who are known as dependent below 15 years of age and retired people or above 60 years of age both these groups are known as the dependent population next one is <coughs> occupational structure then religious composition and lastly migration patterns so in your course it is a topic demographic attributes of indian population but that covers so many sub topics and in the examination the question will not be on the demographic attributes it will be on either of them the important in my opinion are the sex ratio literacy rate and dependency ratio 
these are more important. I will cover all these, but the important on which the questions are being asked by the paper setters are, are either density of population, distribution and density, maybe sex ratio, maybe literacy rate, maybe dependency ratio. But separately, a question is asked on the migration also. Migration I have covered in the first paper, again I will repeat because there are some new students in the class. So these are known as the characteristics of population of any country. They are also known as the demographic attributes. And I start with, not with birth and death. First I will take this number 4, distribution of population. And if there is a question on the distribution of population of India, you have to use the same sentence. As I discussed in the first paper, population geography of the world, we have to start the distribution of population in India, note down this sentence. The distribution of population in India is not uniform. This is a very important sentence in geography. Because no distribution is uniform. It may be anything. The distribution is always unequal. Highly unequal. So take the help of this sentence to start your answer. The distribution of population is not uniform in India because of the following factors. Number one, terrain and topography. People prefer to stay in the leveled areas. Level means plain areas. Mountainous areas are not very attractive for large size of population. So, you can see in India, any part which is mountainous is less densely populated. Any area which is leveled is more densely populated. Example, you can add yourself. Himalaya is, is sparsely populated. Hills of Northeast India, including Anachal Pradesh, are less densely populated or sparsely populated. Same may be the case with the Eastern Ghat and the Western Ghat. You can give the answer yourself. In opposition to this, the plain areas are more densely populated. And plains, we have the northern plains of India, the coastal plains of India. That is very obvious. Number two. Climate. Suitability of temperature and rainfall. There is a word we use in geography, extreme climates. Extreme, either very hot or very cold or very wet. All the three, very hot, very cold and very wet or more rainfall, they are sparsely populated areas. People prefer to stay where the temperature conditions are mild, which can be bared by him. In the temperature, when a person can work in the field or in the factory. So, mild climate areas of the country are more densely populated. 